Most people have never heard of pareidolia, but nearly everyone has experienced it. Anyone who has looked at the moon and spotted two eyes, a nose, and a mouth has felt the pull of pareidolia. It's the imagined perception of a pattern or meaning where it does not actually exist, according to the World English Dictionary. It's picking a face out of a knotted tree trunk or finding zoo animals in the clouds. German design studio Onformative is undertaking perhaps the world's largest and most systematic search for pareidolia. Their Google Faces program will spend the next few months sniffing out face-like shapes in Google Maps. This phenomena of seeing faces was also attributed to the very famous face of Cydonia that was found on Mars. The face was first imaged in detail by the Viking 1 and Viking 2 orbiters. 18 images were taken by the orbiters. Viking 1 launched on July 20, 1976 and Viking 2 orbited Mars on July 25, 1978. The striking likeness the apparent natural formation had to a face allowed the image to quickly gain notoriety around the world. The possibility of ancient ruins being on Mars is not a hypothesis held by modern science. And it is certainly not a scenario that NASA endorses. Neither does any other space-going nation appear to have any interest in investigating the possibility. Many conspiracies have surfaced over the years regarding covert operations in search of exactly such ruins on our neighboring planets. Many claiming black operations have occurred, such as an Apollo 20 program, with some rather convincing CGI hoaxes subsequently being created. Regardless, what a number of authentic researchers have managed to accomplish by just studying imagery of Mars and also of historical knowledge of the region held here on Earth is quite remarkable. Subsequent orbital imagery of the Cydonia region of Mars have attempted to debunk the face as just being a product of light angle. However, thankfully, people did not let these debunking efforts dissuade them from further investigations of the area. Some researchers who were versed in the works of Zachariah Sitchin connected the location to the possible burial site a king. Recorded within the 10th Sumerian tablet, Sitchin had apparently translated a passage regarding a god known as Alalu who requested upon death to be buried where he would be able to peer into space gazing upon Earth forever. Although many claim Sitchin's vague understanding of the writings may have led to mistranslations, Sitchin became convinced that this tenth tablet also laid claim to the king being the constructor of the pyramids. People who knew these fragments of information actually connected a network of apparent extremely ancient pyramidal ruins resting very near to the face. These remnants of once great structures undoubtedly align with the star constellation of Pleiades. What is astonishing is that these ruins would not have been discovered without Sitchin's translations. Was Sitchin right all along? Is this really proof of ancient ruins on our nearest neighbor? The alignments are certainly compelling and must be more than just coincidence. As always, thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. China's Yu-22 rover, currently exploring the surface of our moon, has exposed an intriguing discovery, a mysterious object that many are labeling the hut. It is a cube-shaped curiosity, which oddly just appears to be resting upon the moon, as if once placed. In previous videos, we have examined similar anomalies many believe to be obelisks. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track if there's something very important to be developed from the moon. Together we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by to comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? With even Buzz Aldrin himself claiming there to be a monolith on Phobos, one of Mars' moons. And there is indeed a mysterious object resting on the surface of this mysterious satellite. A moon which not only appears to be hollow from one side, but is on a decaying orbit which does not make sense almost as if it were a ghost of the past, earthly calculations revealing that the moon should have disintegrated into Mars long ago. Yet the moon still exists, along with its mysterious so-called monolith. Yet I digress. 
The thing that makes these objects so interesting is how they seemingly appear to have once been placed where they have rested for untold millennia. No contact trail, no debris, dust plume, or disturbance at all, and most importantly, no crater of any form. Unfortunately, however, according to Chinese space officials, it may be a long time before the rover reaches the object, if at all. One major reason is that U-22 isn't active most of the time. The solar-powered spacecraft cannot operate during the 14-and-a-half Earth-day-long lunar night, nor for roughly 24 hours after sunrise and before sunset. U-22 also stays offline during lunar noon, as temperatures at that time can reach 127 degrees Celsius. What is this object? Further photographic study and detailed research into its precise location needs to be undertaken. It is an object which we find highly compelling. There are many unique ancient megastructures that can be found all over the world with Japan being no exception. However, interestingly, some of these extremely ancient earthworks cannot be found anywhere else on Earth. Known as a kufan, these unique yet highly recognizable shaped earthworks, translated as meaning ancient mound tomb or ancient grave in Japanese, we feel could quite possibly also be found upon Mars. Not only could, but may have already been located and identified. Of course, without actually visiting the planet, we cannot confirm this beyond doubt. Yet the similarities between these two locations is unquestionably compelling. The best-known Kofun within Japan is known as the Dyson Kofun, approximately 500 meters long and 300 meters across at its widest point. It is an enormous ancient structure with the entire tomb perimeter measuring in at 840 meters long. Enclosed by three moats, the mound rises approximately 35 meters above the surrounding terrain. The inner moat is the widest at approximately 60 meters, with the entire mound being approximately 100,000 square meters in area, and the entire tomb some 460,000 square meters. Today, the tomb is off-limits, protected by the Imperial Household Agency in the center of Sakai City. The moats are maintained and provide a sanctuary for fish and water birds. Although, conveniently, the mound itself has been left completely overgrown by vegetation, this regardless of the risk of deterioration by the roots of trees, along with the additional point of them being tourist attractions. One has to wonder whether this deliberate choice to leave them completely obscured by trees is actually an attempt to conceal their shape from the rest of the world. Why leave such clearly important ancient structures engulfed in trees, with root systems left to flourish that are notorious for destroying ancient structures? Why make such a decision if they were not indeed attempting to conceal these enigmatic earthworks? We strongly suspect, although with only circumstantial evidence of course, that a lost civilization, possibly a mother civilization of Earth, will one day be confirmed upon Mars. It continues to be a puzzling question as to why some of the most ancient ruins on Earth are also seemingly the most advanced. Is this fact suggestive of intercontinental travel? Possibly our highly advanced ancient ancestors having built such awe-inspiring structures upon their arrival to our planet after traveling here from Mars? Could there possibly be ancient kofuns, and indeed other ancient structures and tombs, still left upon the red planet, waiting to be rediscovered, waiting to inform our modern civilization of another chunk of human history? Why are these enigmatic, iconic ancient kofuns only found within Japan? Why does this anomaly on Mars look exactly like one? Why do the Japanese continue to conceal the Kofun's true shape beneath dense tree lines? We find all of these suspicious factors highly compelling. Why did we never go back to the moon? Undoubtedly, man's greatest achievement, 
a feat which has apparently never been attempted again. There are many conspiracy theories surrounding the moon missions, some for good reasons and others not so. A mission to the moon, or indeed Mars, should be an experience which unites humanity under a common goal. Yet, alas, this unity rarely occurs. It is a well-known fact that knowledge is power, yet unfortunately this fact can often breed deceit and deception. For it is believed by some that knowledge only makes one powerful when it is concealed from another regardless of whether this always be accurate within reality. Because of this system of accumulating and protecting power, space-going nations have gone to tremendous efforts to conceal things from the public, and indeed each other. The United States government, for example, demands astronomers, astronauts, and many other workers at NASA sign an oath of confidentiality. Upon breaking this oath, you could face a conviction of treason, a crime which carries the death penalty. However, regardless of this, over the past few years, more and more individuals from around the world have bravely began to blow the whistle on these secrecies. Dr. Ken Johnston, former director of NASA's Department of Photographic Evidence, has stated that during his stay at the agency, he was able to see original photos of countless ruins, pyramids, and intact temples all resting upon the moon. Not only are there now a number of independent testimonies, made by numerous figures from within these space agencies, and the accompanying programs, confessing to the concealment of ancient ruins on the moon's surface, but we also have compelling physical evidence of such structures, including photographs released by NASA themselves. One was snapped by the Apollo 17 astronauts in 1972. Subsequently uploaded to the official NASA website, it was originally labeled as overexposed. However, as technology has evolved and computer software has become more inept at refining images, it has revealed something amazing. Along with apparent pyramidal structure, clearly seen within this image, some investigators have also highlighted a possible monolith in the foreground. Was Space Odyssey trying to tell us something? Predictably, many people have come forward attempting to discredit this discovery. Yet fortunately for us, in the December of 2008, the Hubble Space Telescope took some extremely intriguing images of its own. Images which seem to corroborate the once overexposed Apollo photo. Do these images actually show ancient ruins upon the surface of the moon? If this is the case, how did they get there? Or more importantly, who could have built them? Are these relics proof of an ancient space-going civilization? Or maybe extraterrestrial activity? Regardless of how they got there, we find their existence highly compelling and could be perceived as a possible motive for turning the space programs into black projects. Maybe we did go back to the moon. It's just most were never told about it. After all, knowledge is power. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track if there's something very important to be developed from the moon. Together we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by the comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there?